what's cracking everybody welcome back to boo tv like comment subscribe hit the bell stay notified whenever we upload a new video um i see a lot of uh debates and things going on in the uh, social media nba circles and there's probably in the midst of all the debates the heaviest ones are lebron versus jordan LeBron versus Kobe, Kobe versus Jordan. But even more so than Kobe versus Jordan is the Jordan versus LeBron, LeBron versus Kobe. It's always LeBron versus somebody. And these 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 fans are clashing. And there's some good debates. And there's some Jordan extremists. There's some Kobe Bryant extremists. And there's there's some there well there's a lot of LeBron James extremists and we call them bronze sexuals. But an argument that you really get from the LeBron sexuals, the bronze sexuals, more than anything, uh, and not always bronze sexuals, but other people is that oh well Kobe Bryant gets slighted because he was inefficient. Oh, he was a shot chucker. Oh, he has the most missed shots than anybody in NBA history. First of all, if you are a shooting guard, not only are you just a shooting guard, but you are one of the greatest scorers and arguably the greatest scorer to ever play in the NBA. You are that elite of a scorer and you played 20 seasons you're probably going to have more missed shots than anybody else. There has never been a shooting guard in league history that has played as many seasons as Kobe, despite him missing some years due to his Achilles injury, missed a lot of games due to his Achilles injury. Uh, not many shooting guards, or there hasn't been another shooting guard that's played as long as Kobe. That's been elite. Those are just the facts, all right? So if you're gonna sit here and try to tarnish Kobe Bryant's career based on the fact that he missed more shots in NBA history, which is a flawed argument, then you hereby have to use the same argument against LeBron James, who has more turnovers than anybody in NBA history. But the Bron sexuals don't like to bring that up. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have more missed shots than more turnovers because more turnovers means I'm actually giving the ball to the other team. At least with a missed shot, there's a chance that my teammate or I can get my own rebound and still keep the possession versus giving the possession away. So to all those people that like to do that, and don't keep that energy consistent on the other end, you can't have your cake and eat it too, buddy. You can't. So pick a side. And I, both arguments are flawed. I don't think that's a good argument against Kobe. And that's not a good argument against LeBron James. He has the ball in his hand a lot. Of course, he's going to have a lot of turnovers. But if you're going to pick that side of the argument and say Kobe is getting supremely slighted because the mo he has the most missed shots in NBA history, then you have to keep that energy the same way on the LeBron James side. So pick and choose where you're going to be, but keep the energy consistent. But where I stand, both of those arguments are flawed, but I'm calling y'all out. Next. His field goal percentage. This notion that Kobe was inefficient is mind-boggling. I've watched this guy play over his entire career. And yeah, there has been games where Kobe Bryant probably took more shots than he should have. Yeah, there has been games where Kobe Bryant was a bit more selfish than he should have been. Those games do exist. I've seen them with my own eyes. I would sit there in my living room pissed off saying, Kobe, all right, listen, I can't even defend you, bro. You got to pass the ball. This is a bit too much. Uh, there were those games, but that was not a consistent thing by any means. That was not a everyday occurrence, but people act like it was. It wasn't. All right, next. And I haven't even, what I'm about to present to you guys in this video, this, is a, this isn't even me digging real deep into the numbers. This is using the numbers that people like to throw around. So Kobe Bryant was inefficient. Uh, he, he, yeah, yeah, he scored a lot of points, but but he took a lot of shots. He was inefficient compared to everybody else. 
First off, Kobe Bryant played the majority of his career in an era that was low scoring and defenses were much better than they are today. On top of that, being the scorer that Kobe Bryant was, he would see defenses that not other players would see. He would have to deal with defenses and schemes and double teams and triple teams that not many other people in the history of the league had to deal with and still get his shots off. Next. Besides that, I got here the average or the field goal, the average field goal percentage for players for shooting guards compared to Kobe Bryant's field goal percentage in those same years. And Kobe Bryant was more efficient. Efficient isn't even the right word. Kobe was more accurate. But if you want to use efficient, we can use efficient. Kobe Bryant was more efficient slash accurate. Almost every year from 1998 to 2013. Now, the reason I stopped at 2013 is because he tore his Achilles after that. And he was never the same player after he tore his Achilles. All right. So let me break the numbers down for you guys. The 98-99 season, the league average for shooting guards. And to be honest, the point guard averages were about the same as well. But I didn't feel like doing it because the numbers were relatively around, around the same. The 98-99 season, the league average for shooting guards was 41.3%. Kobe Bryant that year, 46. All right. 99-2000, shooting guards in the NBA, 43.4%. Kobe Bryant, 46. 2000-2001 season, shooting guards, 42.7. Kobe Bryant, 46. 2001-2002, league average. 43.6, Kobe Bryant, 46. 2002 to 2003, league average, 42.7, Kobe Bryant, 45. 2003 to 2004, shooting guard, league average, 41.8, Kobe Bryant, 43. 2004 to 2005, 42.5 is the league average, Kobe Bryant, 43. 05-06 season, 43.9 for the field, 45% for Kobe. 06-07, 44.2 for the field, 46 for Kobe. 07-08, 44.1, 45% for Kobe. 2008-2009, 43.7 for the all shooting guards, 46% for Kobe. 2009-2010, 43.8, 45% for Kobe. 2010-2011, 43.7 for the league, 45 for Kobe. 11 uh, 2011 to 2012, 42.7, 43 for Kobe. Uh, 2012 to 2013, 42.8 for the league, 46% for Kobe. So Kobe Bryant was more accurate and more efficient than the league average for all shooting guards during each and every one of those years. So if you want to go ahead and say that all shooting guards were inefficient, then you might as well go ahead and say that. And even when you break it, and I even, I even broke down specific players. I'm not going to go through all that. But you look at his contemporaries. Ray Allen, who wasn't as good as Kobe. But we wouldn't call Ray Allen inefficient or inaccurate, would we? No. But during those years, Kobe Bryant had, had more years where he shot a higher percentage than Ray Allen. And Ray Allen only, his, the, the years were... The majority of the years where Ray Allen had a better field goal percentage than Kobe was after he joined the Celtics, and now he was pretty much a wide-open spot-up shooter at that point when he was part of the big three Celtics. His role changed. He was basically just shooting open jumpers at that point, two twos and threes, but he wasn't tasked with being the guy and seeing harder defenses once he joined the Celtics. Okay, so even taking Ray Allen, including that, Kobe still had more years where Kobe shot a better field goal percentage than Ray Allen. Paul Pierce, do people call Paul Pierce inefficient or inaccurate? No, Kobe had more years where he shot a better percentage than Paul Pierce during that. Tracy McGrady, does Tracy McGrady get called inefficient and accurate? No, Kobe Bryant had more years where he shot a better field goal percentage than Tracy McGrady. And the numbers really aren't even, even that close for a lot of these players. Kobe shot better from field goal range a lot more than these other players that we compare him to. Allen Iverson as well. Vince Carter as well. What are we talking about?
And when, and then when you look into the the true field goal percentage, Kobe is among the elite. He even Kobe even has a better true field goal percentage than Tim Duncan and uh Kevin Kevin Garnett. And you wouldn't call them inefficient or inaccurate. Like where And and these these is these are these are anybody can go look at these numbers. I'm not pulling them out my ass. You can go do the research yourself. But on these big networks, FSN, ESPN, Kobe Bryant. Oh no, not Kobe. He he was inefficient. Oh no, not Kobe inefficient. Well, what numbers are you looking at, and what are you comparing them to? Was he the most accurate player in in the history of the league? No. But you guys you guys are people are sliding this guy severely off a flawed argument. So if you're going to call Kobe inefficient, call Ray Allen, call Paul Pierce, call Tracy McGrady, call Vince Carter, call Allen Iverson, inefficient too. And none of those guys, none of those guys saw defenses as long, for as long a time. See, I was going to say, Vince Carter, Allen Iverson saw similar defenses. Um, but they didn't shoot as good as Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant had a longer tenure than all of those guys. Allen Iverson close behind. And I ain't even going to call out Allen Iverson because he's, he's, he's pint-sized. So the fact that AI was doing what he was doing is incredible on its own. All right? But but fact of the matter is, if you want to call Kobe inefficient, you got to call everybody else inefficient that falls under that line. LeBron James didn't come in. See, LeBron James doesn't cover most of these years. He didn't get drafted till 03, 04. Um, or... Was that the yeah the two thousand three two thousand four season when LeBron got drafted? But even with that, LeBron has been some was came in shooting around forty five forty six. But once LeBron started hitting the fifty percent field goal range, he was pretty much steady in the high forties low fifties. But LeBron wasn't seeing the type of defensive Kobe's was seeing. Kobe was such an elite scorer. There was no such thing as sag off defense on Kobe Bryant because he was a threat anywhere on the court. So Kobe Bryant was always smothered. By one, two, three defenders. Even if there was one defender guarding him, all eyes were on Kobe from the second and third defender to step up quickly once he blew by the other guy or rush him once he went into his move and stopped his dribble. LeBron gets sag off defense. They, they give LeBron the open shot and see if he's hitting that day because LeBron wasn't a guaranteed, wasn't a guaranteed, uh, Hitter on the jump shot every day. They'd give it to him. Okay, LeBron's not hitting his jumper. Sag off defense. Oh, okay, LeBron might be hitting today. He might be on. Let's close in on him a little bit. Kobe never had that luxury of getting sag off defense. It was always smothering. So the fact that he was still shooting above league average at his position, seeing those kinds of defenses is amazing. Also, uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was... People acting like a player that shot 50% from the field is far more accurate and far more efficient than a player that shot 45% from the field. When in reality, given more volume scores or more volume shooters, the difference between 50% and 45% is usually like one missed jump shot, right? So you have player A took 24 shots, shot 12 for 24. 12 for 24, he's shooting at 50%. Player B also took 24 shots. Made 11 of 24. His percentage is 45. One missed shot. And they will act like player A and player B are night and day. Night and day. That one shot could have been a buzzard, a, a, a heave at the buzzard. You know what I mean? Like, what, what are we talking about? Really? Really? Kobe played in the most defensively oriented uh, era in NBA history. Arguably. Kobe Bryant played more top 10 defenses. Kobe played more top 10 defenses. Than players from that time. From the year 2000 to the year 2013, Kobe played against 36 playoff teams. 28 of those 36 playoff teams had a top 10 defense. 15 of those teams had a top 5 defense. 10 teams 
had a top three defensive rating. So over 75% of the time, Kobe was playing against top 10 defenders. Defensive teams. This is the stuff you have to deal with. And he still has more 50 win victories, or he, he still has more victories against 50 plus, 50 plus win teams in the history of the NBA. What are we talking about, y'all? I'm not making these numbers up. Go look them up yourself. Go look them up yourself. So we need to hit the pause button on slighting this man with flawed arguments. I'm just saying, and if you're going to use that flawed arg, if you're going to use that flawed argument, you can't have your cake and eat it too, and keep that energy consistent for all the other players, because he shot a better percentage than a lot of the players in his time at similar positions, and these are just the facts. Keep that same energy. All right. That's all I got to say. Actually, there is a there's a video on YouTube that breaks this down even more with graphics and numbers um, that you can visually look at. And this guy did it beautifully. Um, and I got a little bit of my information for him from him as far as the uh, the defensive, the defensive uh, statistics. But all the other stuff I looked up on myself, uh, looked up by myself, but uh I'll go ahead and put the link to that description and in, in uh, I'll put, I can't talk today. I will go ahead and put the link to that video in the description of this video. And uh, you can also see it right here by Legend of Winning, debunking the biggest lie told about Kobe Bryant's career. Uh, this guy laid it out magnificently, even better than I could. Uh, he actually, I don't think he went over the basic field goal percentages, comparing it uh, Kobe's numbers to other players um, at that position during that time frame. But he really digs down into the uh, true field goal percentage. And like I said, has graphics and everything. Go check it out. So it's a magnificent video. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say, man. I got to say, I watched this guy play his whole, whole entire career. Never did I think the dude was just like in, inefficient and inaccurate. It was like, what? what well, yeah, yeah there, there were a couple games, but the dude was pretty much solid especially given the type of defenses and the schemes that were getting thrown at him. Like, it was incredible, the shots he, he, he was hitting at a clip. Just saying. Not to mention the lacerated fingers and mangled fingers he had. Crazy. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and uh, highly recommend. Please go check out that video and let me know what you think about it. Like, comment, subscribe. I know I'm about to say it again. Take care. Hit the bell. And uh, be safe out there. I appreciate you guys for watching. See you on the next one. We out, baby.